And now I still have a few liters of liquid nitrogen remaining. Tag from Austria just beat a few of my top scores with the Penium E2160, uh, which I really consider to be relatively safe in terms of the top scores. So he beat my 1M and Pi Fast. As I only have a few liters of LN2 remaining, I can actually do a very quick attempt with the CPU as I technically know how it runs, what kind of temperatures it likes, etc. So it should be relatively like straightforward, but of course anything can happen. It's very likely that I don't achieve anything because the scores are very hard to uh, achieve. It takes time to reach those very high clock speeds. But anyways, uh, I double checked the Nismo Rampage Extreme, the one I bought from Japan, and it seems uh, the most likely situation is that I need to replace the Northbridge uh, Fujitsu capacitor. So even with the C-Sonic power supply, it's very flaky uh, on uh, the uh, memory stability. So I need to investigate, can I get it running correctly by replacing the Fujitsu? It has been uh, like developing weird issues over time, I, I really feel like so. It felt very dodgy when I ran it last time with the E8600 uh, on LN2 for the 32M record. But anyway, so this is the Team Finland Rambage Extreme once again. Corsair Dominator GDX2 memory, just like always. F1 Dark Container from Kimping Cooling and NVIDIA 6500TT for the monitor signal with capture card. So Windows Server 2003 only, as that's the better operating system for those tests. So without further ado, I'll get started and really keep your thumbs up. Let's hope for the best. Let's see what happens. I really have to preserve LN2 as well as I can, as I don't have overly much of it remaining at the moment. So, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Nineteen point eight target in high fast. One hundred forty six at the moment. My previous top is like twenty point oh two, something like this. Twenty point twenty three. That's the new top score in PyFast, barely. Previous one by Tag at 19A1, this is 1980. He might have a backup, but I think he used a lot of attempts on that one. I really feel like so. So, let's try this. Eleven point six oh nine. Not exact. One attempt, one record. 11.625 was my previous best, so at 5.1. So this is uh, uh, 11.562, so this is like 60 millisecond uh, improvement with just one attempt at lower frequency. Pretty awesome. Two. OK, 
Okay, I think now I should try 1am again. Okay, 5-1, 1am. 10 megahertz higher than what I ran as high as frequency previously. <laughs> How do you feel, Tag? Do you like this run? These are incredible, uh, incredible games. Absolutely wicked runs. This should be better. Yeah, 375. Okay, small improvement on the 32M. It could be a bit better, so this was like a 3.4 second gain, I think. Uh, 3.2, so there's some efficiency issue. Need to check what's going on. But pretty okay. Okay, a small improvement on the 32M, frequency-wise, quite big improvement, so 5,075 megahertz. My previous best was done at like nearly spot on 5 gigahertz, like 4,995, so 9 minutes 31.891. This is pretty much like 7.1 second improvement, so it's pretty good memory. This is the 1886.4, four eighteen sixty one. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm nearly out of LM2 at the moment, but yeah, pretty happy. Five two. And okay, that went really well considering I only had maybe like 7 liters of liquid nitrogen remaining for these attempts. But I managed to do 
multiple different runs in PyFast, 1M, and even three successful runs in SuperPy 32M. So I think the top PyFast was like 19.14, 19.2, something like this. The best 1M was the 11.375. The 1M is really like buggy. You need to just hit the correct efficiency to get the good run. I had a bit better run coming based on the loop 16. It was a bit faster. So I think that run would have been like 11.34, something like that, 3.5, somewhere in that range. And the 32M, the best run was like 7 point something second improvement. And there's definitely a bit more headroom remaining on the 32M, so I should be able to do at least sub 9.30, like nine and a half minute run. So it's pretty all right because there's only one run in the world with the E2160 that's under 10 minutes and that's my run. So <laughs> pretty, pretty awesome, yeah. So yeah, towards the end, pretty good session overall, which has lasted for like three weeks or so. Uh, I still have many different 775 and soon even 1366 CPUs to run. So I have a lot of work to do, but I just don't have like uh, so much time these days or at the time of making this video, I have a lot of things going on. So it's not always so easy to find time to run all of this stuff. But yeah, so I will upload these scores to hardwarebot.org. So this video ended up being a bit shorter in terms of the runs, etc. But it's still pretty interesting stuff, if you ask me. At least if you like these older platforms, which are the uh, pinnacle of overclocking in the whole like history of computers, if you ask me. The years from 2006 until like 2011, 2012, that's the golden era of overclocking, if you ask me. Before 2006, it was very hard, so overclocking wasn't really that mainstream back in the day. Uh, it, it was very worthwhile if you knew what you were doing, but it still wasn't like mainstream enough. It became mainstream or more mainstream when LGA 775 came out to the market. So I at least that those are the best years for me because I really like DDR3. I don't like DDR2 and I don't really like DDR4 and 5. DDR3, the utmost best memory generation if you ask me. Uh, I tried to post and boot DDR3 2200. It was very close. Uh, this board should be able to do it. So that just needs time because uh, I think at least the memory should be able to run over 2200 CAS 6 in SuperPy 32 and that would give a very nice boost overall. But yeah, we'll see what happens if I run this CPU more later. But yeah, Rampage Extreme definitely easier and probably a bit better overall than P5E3 Premium. I ran this CPU the last time on the P5E3 and I managed to smash all of those scores very easily. I think I still had the previous best runs in 1M and PyFast on the Rampage Extreme, but I run like I ran like the W Primes and SuperPy 32M on the P5E3, so it doesn't really matter. Rex, usually at least a lot more straightforward if you have a working motherboard. But yeah, so if you like to see these runs once again on the Pentium E2160, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Maybe check out my Patreon page as well if you want to support my work, and yeah. Thanks for watching some of my legacy overclocking content once again, and I will see you on the next one.